Yes, ma'am. You can start, ma'am. So I uh, would request Avril and Parneet to begin. Thank you. Am I audible and visible? Yes, yes, you are. Available. I quote, excellence is a gradual result of always striving to do better. I unquote, a very good afternoon to everyone. Today, all of us are here together for a very significant career counseling session about professional courses offered at GGSIP University. We are extremely delighted to have amongst us, Mr. Ravi Kant Swami, the director of Delhi Metropolitan Education. We wholeheartedly welcome you, sir. Uh, Ma'am, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. We are also glad to have Ms. Charlotte Gautam, who is the Associate Professor and Head Outreach. We welcome you, respected ma'am. All of us present here today are really looking forward to this enlightening session with you. Over to you, ma'am and sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, both of you, for, for welcoming us. It was indeed a great gesture. We would also like to welcome all the students who are uh, sitting here, who have taken out their time. And uh, I, I believe that you sitting here means that you are serious about your careers. So uh, without taking much of your time, I would like to formally welcome uh, Dr. Ravi Khan Swami, sir, who has a decorated and diverse educational background, a PhD in management, MBA and bachelor's in economics from prestigious universities in India and has certifications and trainings from B schools like I am Bangalore, I am Calcutta, and I am in New Delhi. Dr. Swami has an assorted list of subjects at his command that credits him with the excellence of multivariate teaching style. And he has published numerous research papers and supervised PhD thesis. So uh, without taking much of your time, over to you, sir. Uh, you can uh, enlighten the students with all the information about the IP University. Uh, okay, so I'll uh, start by sharing my screen. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so students, uh, I would straight away uh, start by uh, talking about this university. Uh, we call it uh, IP. IP is the popular name because we are in the habit of uh, forming acronyms. Uh, economics people call uh, ECO. Uh, so IP University, uh, the real name is Guru Govind Singh Indraprasth University. Indraprasth, as you all know, is the original name of uh, Delhi. This name appeared in Mahabharat, where uh, the five Pandav brothers demanded five villages. One of them was Indraprast. Uh, now, this university was, uh, was formed soon after Delhi got its partial statehood. Well, Delhi is still fighting for its statehood, but it got its partial statehood. And soon after that, this university was established. Uh, moving ahead. Uh, yeah, Dr. Shalini, am I on the second slide? Okay, now uh, this is this you are is on the first picture. slide, sir. Okay, slide so is uh, this is this is the picture of the university, which is located in uh, Dwarka. Uh, now, before we move ahead, let us uh, see what we are going to discuss today, uh, and uh, don't worry, it will be a short session, twenty-eight minutes only. Uh, shorter than your regular lectures, which I believe are 40 to 45 minutes. Uh, now, this is what we are going to discuss today. First is about IP University. Uh, second is the courses which you are going to pursue after your 12th. Uh, third thing which we are going to talk about is the admission processes, which obviously these days are uh, online. And uh, the fee structures, obviously your parents' hard-earned money. Uh, then the scope of uh, the professional courses, which I'm going to discuss with you today. So these five things we are going to discuss today. Let us start with the first thing, an introduction to IP University. Now, before I introduce IP University to you, 
let us try to understand uh, how how do we compare delhi university and ip university uh, my dear students in delhi we have two major universities one is university of delhi another is this ip university i say two major universities because these two universities have around 90 affiliated or constituent colleges so these two universities are spread throughout delhi now how do we compare these two universities at the outset are these universities competing with each other the answer is no why because university of delhi is all about academic courses and ip university is all about professional courses and to differentiate between an academic and professional course well you take any example like uh, bcom or bsc or ba or say psychology honors or something like that which is a pure academic course so the academic course enhances your knowledge yes it enhances your knowledge and definitely it enhances your knowledge and therefore the output is knowledge enhancement while a professional course like bba or bba llb or ba llb or hotel management or journalism enhances your knowledge number one provides you the skills to apply that knowledge and last but not the least it provides you the corporate ready attitude and therefore the output of a professional course is not knowledge enhancement it is straight away a job a career to compare university of delhi and ip university i must tell you at the outset that ip university runs professional courses while university of delhi runs academic courses so therefore these two universities do not compete with each other rather they complement each other in the terms in the sense that one runs academic courses another runs professional courses now uh, the next is uh, our first point regarding ip university so ip university as i said it was soon uh, established after delhi became a partial state in 1998 right uh, now rankings is something which you need to understand a little uh, a little more about now uh, many rankings are available many agencies organizations are there which keep on ranking colleges and institutes but do we believe them are they are they genuine or or you simply uh, you simply pay for an advertisement in times of india and you get a good ranking what is the story not to comment on that i will not comment on that but then yes there is always a question mark over all those rankings so i am not going to discuss any such ranking here in this presentation i am going to talk with you about the rankings which are provided by the indian government which are supposed to be the most authentic so these are the rankings given by nirf which is national institutional ranking framework run by the government of india by the hrd ministry so uh, the hrd ministry rankings we are going to discuss about ipu now there are around 900 the correct figure is 875 universities in this country right universities are of four kinds central universities like jnu like university of delhi like jamia like amu like bhu these are all central universities funded by the central government second category is the state government universities like ipu then third is the deep university like uh, like say jp or these fourth are the private universities like mit bedrat etc now taking all these four categories of universities together how many universities are there around 875 in india out of those 875 let us see what is the ranking of ip university well the ranking is 79 now you may feel that uh, uh, it's not a good rank they are not among the top 10 but my dear students i can tell you that this includes iits aims everything therefore let us understand like the the, the best way to understand this ranking is that we say that ip university stands among the top 9% universities in india top 9% 09 with a ranking of 79 among 875 universities ip university stands among the top 9% universities in this country 
and these are the nirf rankings no rankings given by any magazine or newspaper <coughs> among the law courses ip university has got a much better ranking the law courses at ipu are ranked 12th in this country engineering the rank is 86th uh business management courses like bba the rank is 51 something like this right so these are the nirf rankings uh so in a way i can conclude this ranking part by saying that ip university stands among top somewhere in law the position is better but overall it stands among the top 8 to 9% universities in this country <coughs> another authentic uh, ranking agency is nac the grade is a of course uh Another important point which you need to understand is membership of AIU, which is Association of Indian Universities. If any university has got membership of AIU, it means the degree of that university is recognized by all other universities of this world. So, IP University has got that AIU membership. <coughs> There are around ninety-five colleges which are located in Delhi and NCR, and uh the university has got around 80 courses mind it all professional courses no academic course and the number of students is 81000 which makes it a very large university so thus uh, we complete the first part of our presentation which was the introduction to ip universities coming to the second part and uh, rather we move to the uh, rather before moving to the second part let me uh, show you something which is of interest to you the the bollywood connection or the the celebrities from ipu so my dear students tapsi pandu who tapsi pandu all of you uh, know her she did her btech computer science in 2009 from ipu uh, then uh, if you love reading novels you must have read these novels popular novels like god of the salid or uh, long live the salid god are the days the author of uh, these popular novels gorav sharma did his journalism in 2014 from ipu uh, the deputy leader of congress in lok sabha gorav gogoi did his btech from ipu uh, well uh, again everyone recognizes this face abhish devgan he did his journalism from ipu uh, the, the list is very very long uh, but i'll i'll stop here gurit monga a very popular figure a production house which produced films like uh, masar like gangs of wasepur she also did her journalism from ip so that was just uh, just for your entertainment coming to the second part the courses at ip right now as i said ip has got professional courses i, I cannot talk about all the 80 courses here in this presentation so i'll be talking about the major courses uh blb five year integrated bblb then uh ba jmc which is journalism and mass comm then bba then hotel management uh all these courses are available with ipu <coughs> then uh btech architecture pharmacy nursing so let us try to understand these courses in little detail these courses are divided into two categories first is the stream neutral category and second is the stream specific category stream neutral my dear students stream neutral means that whichever stream you had at your 12th you are eligible for these courses so blb bblb journalism bba hotel management you may be having any stream at 12th bio maths commerce arts vocational you are eligible for these courses while there are courses like uh, while there are courses like btech architecture etc which are not stream neutral you need to have pcm at your 12th for btech similarly for pharmacy and nursing you need to have biology at your 12th right uh, to come again to the stream neutral courses this five year integrated is uh, is a, is a very popular thing because it saves one year of your career of your studies if you do bba llb you get two degrees bba and llb <coughs> if you would have done these two degrees uh, separately it would have taken 3 plus 3 6 years 
but integrated takes five years. So these are the popular courses, right? Uh, that's all about the courses. All professional courses, stream neutral and stream specific. That was the second part. As far as information regarding these details are concerned, the, the link is given here. I would request uh, my uh, my <coughs> colleague, Professor uh, Shalini, to place this link in the chat box so that students can copy this link and uh, go for further details. Now, coming to the admission process for 2022, uh, this is the link which is given. You can click on this link. Now, let us try to understand the admission process also. Obviously, the processes are online and IPU is very advanced in the sense that uh, it was online much, much before COVID. So <clears throat> now, wherever there are national level tests, IPU does not conduct its entrance exam. For example, for BTEC, the national level test JEE -E is available. So IPU will not conduct its entrance exam. It will accept per se the scores of JEE -E for admission to all the IPU affiliated colleges. Similarly for CLAT, well, for class 12 students, CLAT is, is important because the forms are already open and 31st March is the last date for filling the CLAT forms. That is, uh, if you are interested in BLLB or BBLLB, you need to fill the form. You can fill the form for CLAT right today. Uh, so if CLAT is there at the national level, IPU will not conduct its entrance exam. You have to simply uh, appear for CLAT and those scores will be, the, the CLAT scores will be accepted by IPU for admission to all its colleges. Similarly for architecture, NATA is there. It's a national level test. Therefore MBBS, Ayurveda, homeopath, NEET is there. Come to the second category, hotel management, journalism, BBA, BCA. For these, for these courses, national level tests are not available, except, uh, except hotel management. For that, national level test is also available and IPU also conducts its entrance exam. But for these courses, BHMCT, journalism, BBA, BCA, since no national level test is available, so IPU conducts its CET, its own exam, for which the forms generally open around, uh, I, I believe, April, right? So uh, for these courses, time is there. The, the forms are yet to open. So if you are interested in the, the left-hand side courses, you have to appear for the national level tests, the right-hand side courses, the IPU tests. The link is already there. Maybe you can share the link so that the students can get the details. That was about the admission process. Now, uh, due to uh, COVID and all these problems, all the Greek alphabets, Omicron, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, of versions of COVID, we find that uh, IPU has given a special provision that students can take on the spot admissions also. In fact, these are provisional admissions. You can book your seat and then uh, subsequently the admission is cleared when you, when you go for CLAT and all that. So this provision, this facility is there. In case you want to know more, you can simply walk into your nearest IPU college and, and book your seat with a provisional admission. This is a special provision due to COVID and all these difficulties which we are facing. Uh, so that was about the admission process. Coming to the fee part, yes, my dear students, uh, <clears throat> you are located in Delhi and Delhi is a hub of educational institutions. And when I say hub, there's an entire range of fee structures available at Delhi. So we have institutions like OP Jindal, which charge 8 lakh rupees per year. We have Bennett University, which is again charging 5-6 lakhs per year. But IPU, because it belongs to Delhi government, so it is not like those universities. The fee structures are very economical or reasonable, I can say. For any course, the fee will range between 80,000 to 115,000. 20% plus minus can be there. Say, for example, for a law course, the fee is, I believe, 79,000 something, right? 
so uh, and, and the fee structures also vary college wise sub colleges have a little higher structure but then that variation is to the tune of 20 25% only this is the general range within which all the ipu courses will have their fee structures uh, what i'm trying to tell you is that ipu lies in the economy zone uh, when we talk about the fee structures it is because it's a government university so the fee structures are not in lakhs they are in thousands obviously being a government university there are no hidden charges uh, like it may happen in any other university but in government university there cannot be any hidden charges so uh, with this we complete another part of our presentation uh, <clears throat> now related to this is the scholarship part uh, well uh, you must be aware that uh, delhi is the richest state in india in terms of per capita income yes uh, delhi is the richest state and the students get benefit uh, very good scholarship schemes are there and i can tell you the scholarship schemes provided by delhi government are better than the scholarship schemes provided by any other state in india maybe the reason is delhi is the richest state in india so uh, there are various schemes merit cum means economically weaker section minorities merit based by the colleges themselves so these schemes you can avail once you become a student of ip university and once you complete your first year because all these schemes are based on the scores which you achieve in your first year at ip university so if you are reasonably good in your studies i'm not saying very good if you are reasonably good in your studies your education may be free it may be funded by the government of delhi <clears throat> we have reached the last part of our presentation the scope of various professional courses which we have discussed i'll start with law courses right now uh, as far as the law courses are concerned i am talking about the integrated courses uh, bba llb ba llb there are four areas in which a student can have a career first is litigation put on a black coat go to the courts you may go to district court high court supreme court you become an advocate we call it litigation second is if you want to join a job then law firms are there uh i believe every firm needs lawyers and there are specific law firms also which deal only in in the law cases then if you are interested in becoming a judge then you can appear for the judiciary exams every state has got the judiciary exams and you can become a magistrate and yes politics is also a career for law students why i say so because you look around the world everywhere the best politicians are having law background yes uh, barack obama kamala harris the recently elected vice president of usa the, the indian the indian origin she she also is a law graduate jawahar lal nehru sardar patel mahatma gandhi all were law graduates so can i say that politics is also a career option for law graduates yes i will maintain that so that that's the scope of law courses moving ahead the scope of journalism well with with this with this ott with this mobile in our head the scope of journalism has become very fold earlier it was like theaters events television but now with ott the scope is so wide the scope has increased many fold and these are the areas in which a journalism graduate can find a career it can be content writing video editing print journalism so many areas in which uh, a student who has done ba jmc can make a career <clears throat> moving ahead hotel management yes uh we have front office as one area in hotel management housekeeping as another area and then food and beverage uh food is the kitchen part beverage is the bar part so these are the three traditional areas other than that if you are a hotel management graduate you can very well own a restaurant right now uh, talking about btech well students as far as btech is concerned 
uh, you need to understand in little detail that technology is something which has got various patterns, right? Patterns are there. When I say patterns, I mean that uh, at, at one point in time, civil engineering has a lot of demand, then it's electrical, then it's mechanical, then it's mining, it keeps on happening. But then computer science or IT is a field, the demand for which is going to grow for, for at least three, four decades now, thanks to COVID, right? We, we can't take COVID anyway. But then because of COVID, we find that the digitization process is going to grow in a big, big manner. And who's going to bring about that, that digitization? It is the BTEC computer science graduates. So my dear students, I'm not talking about the scope of BTEC mechanical or automobile or those areas. I'm emphasizing on BTEC CS because in my opinion, I feel that for the coming three, four decades, this is the, this is the branch of engineering which is going to have a lot of demand. Within that, within BTEC CS, we have areas like artificial intelligence, we have cloud computing, we have cyber security, we have internet of things, so on and so forth. There are so many areas. So I'm restricting myself to the scope of BTEC computer science only because this, this is the area which is going to see a boom in the coming three, four decades. Uh, moving ahead, now we are reaching the close of our presentation. Uh, as far as architecture is concerned, yes, after BR, which is available in IPU colleges, you can have a career in the housing industry, you can have a career in the infra, uh, infrastructure uh, sector, so on and so forth. <clears throat> Last is pharmacy. Well, if you have a bio background, pharmacy is also a, a good, uh, good course for you. You can uh, become a medical representative. Every company needs medical representatives for selling its medicines. And please don't undermine this profile. It's not a bad profile. I can tell you it's a very, very good profile. Some people say that, oh, sales is a poor profile. It's not like that. Please stand corrected today. Then you can become a scientist if you have done B Pharma or even medical store. All of us know is a good business, right? With that, we end our presentation. Just a concluding remark now. The concluding remark is the question which is coming to the mind of each one of you. Which course is best for me? My dear students, no one, no one can give an opinion on that. And I'll tell you the reason for that, why no one can give you an opinion which course is best for you. The reason is that whichever course you analyze, researches prove that whichever course you analyze, we find that 25% students, they, they do, they, they perform in an outstanding manner, right? 25% students, they, they do somewhat average, below average. And then majority 50% students, they perform well, they are happy, they are satisfied with their careers. So this diagram depicts what I'm telling you. The middle part, the majority part are those students, whichever course you see, we find that 50% of the students, they are happy, they are satisfied with their career, they do well. 25%, they do, they perform outstandingly well. Then always there are 25% students who, who are say below average in their careers. So this is the output for any course and then what is the what is the concluding remark students can can anyone tell you the formula for success i am sure even even the almighty cannot tell you the formula for success why because the formula is so simple that uh, but the formula is simple but it's difficult to implement the formula for success is this. So simple, huh? If you have the right set of knowledge, the right set of skills, and the right set of attitude, jobs are waiting for you. A good career is waiting for you. Happiness is waiting for you. Thank you for being a very good audience. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. Thank you for that uh, enriching session. It's always a pleasure to listen from me from you. Uh, before we uh, get on to the question and answer round, there are a lot of questions in my chat box. Students, you can write uh, your questions in the chat box. We will be taking at the end. So before we move on to the Q&A round, I would like to request Dipali Sharma. Now, Dipali is our student right now, but she was your senior, right? She, she is the alma mater of the Presentation Convent School. Right. So I would like to, uh, Dipali to say a few words before we move on to the Q&A round. Over to you, Dipali. So good afternoon, everyone. Hope you all are keeping well and uh, and you enjoyed the session at, as it is very informative for your future. I was privileged to get to get an opportunity to study in presentation to on this pre prestigious institution, I must say, the presentation called Winston Secondary School. As, as it taught me the true value of leadership, companionship, and many more. It, this school has become a memory for me, which I'm going to cherish from my whole life. So this time is quite difficult for all of us because we totally switched to online modes, right? But I would suggest you all sitting, all the students sitting here, that start preparing for your entrance exam. Because we must be knowing that from this year, DU is also conducting their entrance exams. And I'm going to put, I'm going to reflect the light on the university called GGIP, which is Guru Gobind Indipas University. So we all, I presume that most of the audience sitting in here must be familiar with the fact that GGIP also conduct entrance exam, which is CET, Common Entrance Test. So on the basis of how much you score there, you're going to get your, your preferred college. You start working from today itself. This common entrance test is not very hard, but you just need to make yourself aware with the basic knowledge what's going on in the current scenario or in the in India as well as internationally. So just make just you need to make yourself aware about it. And uh, a college, not a college education, teaches not only discipline, but it also helps you to enhance yourself as an individual. I am currently pursuing BBA, which is Bachelor's in Business Administration uh, from DME, which is Delhi Metropolitan Education, NOIDA. It is a professional course, but in this university, you will get so many opportunities so where you can enhance and you explore yourself. So I, I must say that participate in as much activities or in as much clubs as you can, because the more you're going to indulge yourself, the more you will learn. Right, and which is going to be very beneficial for you in the mainstream lifestyle as well. So I'm going to conclude up by saying this. And if you have any question or any query, you can. I'm going to drop my number in the chat box. You can contact me anytime. You can pin me anytime. And as we are all so much active on social media, you can connect me there as well. Thank you. Thank you, Dipali. Thank you for those words of encouragement to your juniors. So that was really wonderful. Uh, so, sir, uh, with your permission, uh, may I take a few questions? Okay, so the first question is from uh, Rishita Mittal. She's asking, um, how many marks are required in CLADs, uh, in CLAD uh, entrance exams, so that I can get admission in the top uh, IP colleges? Uh, okay, so as far as marks in the competitive exams are concerned, uh, students, please understand the difference between percentage and percentile. When we represent percentile in the relative or comparative format, it is known as percentile. In all the competitive exams, we have percentile, not percentage, right? So, uh, I can tell you that if your CLAT rank is till 4500, 4500, say in CLAT approximately uh, uh, 52, 53,000 students appear each year. Out of those 53,000 students, if your rank is uh, <clears throat> between, uh, if your rank is till 4500, you can get admission at any NLU. National Law University. Uh, our country has got uh, one NLU in each state. Obviously, there are some states which have two NLUs also. So NLUs are considered to be at the top uh, if your rank is till 4500. So rank is in comparative terms, not, not per se the score is there. You can get an NLU if your rank is up till 4500. For IPU campus, yes, you need a rank 
less than 4500 for other colleges uh, you may have a rank uh, you may have any rank it depends and uh, things keep on changing year on year so uh, means you the answer the the one line answer to this question is that you just prepare you do your best and then uh, let us see what happens to your scores because i can't predict as such what what kind of scores are there for which college uh, well uh, still uh, i'll say that if your rank is say uh, out of 53000 if your rank is uh, say till till 20000 you can uh, easily get a decent ipu college right uh, so next question is is ipu offering bcom courses as well it is offering but it's it does not specialize in bcom i can tell you as i said ip is all about professional courses if you want to go for bcom i'll suggest university of delhi don't go for ipu then university of delhi specializes in bcom honors and economics honors other than obviously many other courses but these two are very popular courses of university of delhi for bcom i will not suggest ipu uh, so next question is uh, for admissions in the architecture b r course Apart from appearing in NATA and JE Paper 2, do we have to register separately for IPU? If yes, when do the registration start? Uh, yes, you have to register uh, simultaneously, not separately for IPU. And uh, the registration for IPU happens simultaneously while filling the uh, NATA form. Uh, you have an option to apply for IPU. And even if you do not do that, with the NATA score, you can participate in the IPU online counseling for admission. So don't worry about IPU form. Uh, the main thing is NATA, NATA. If you have got a NATA score or JE score or CLAT score, then obviously you can take admission in IPU, even if you, even if you uh, have not filled the IPU form. Uh, or I'm trying to tell you is that IPU form can be filled subsequently also. Yes. While filling these forms, say for example, while filling CLAT form, there's an option. So uh, you pay 4,000 for filling the CLAT form and another 1,200 or 1,000 rupees for filling the IPU form, right? So uh, yes, the college or the university forms are filled simultaneously while you are filling forms for these national level tests. Right. Uh, so next is, uh, can you elaborate on the options available after BBA in detail? And what is the difference between company secretary and BBA? I am confused between the two. Okay, so BBA is a very popular management graduation course, wherein the areas of uh, career after BBA, uh, they are marketing, then finance, then HR, operations and international business. These are the five areas in which a BBA can have a career. Uh, as far as uh, company secretary is concerned, uh, students, CS makes a very good combination with a law course rather. So if you are doing BALLB or BBLLB, then uh, say for example, BBLLB plus CS makes a very good combination because company secretaryship is all about corporate governance. Corporate governance means how to, how to abide by the guidelines, how to follow the guidelines. So therefore, uh, means along with BB also you can do CS. It will make a good combination, but with law it makes a better combination. Uh, we do have students in BBA who are doing their CS. So company secretaryship forms a good combination, more so with the law course. Right. Uh, sir, another question is that, uh, is the CET on the same lines, uh, what DU is going to conduct, CU, CT? Are they going to be similar kind of tests? Uh, well, as far as DU is concerned, I don't know, every year they say that they'll move from percentage pattern to the test pattern. I don't know when that is going to happen. Because uh, it's DU considers admissions based on percentages. And there, there is a, there's a great discrepancy in the sense that a student from Bihar board may be having 97 or 98 percent, while a student from Rajasthan board may be a, a better student from Rajasthan board may be having 87 percent. So that way, that discrepancy is there. It continues till date. I don't know when that discrepancy will be removed. 
uh, this year we i read in the newspapers that du will shift to an entrance exam as compared to percentage of 12th but i really doubt it will happen i doubt Right, sir. Uh, I think you have covered it in your presentation, but Karishka is uh, asking: uh, Does B Tech require maths? You covered it that it requires. B Tech requires maths. Obviously, for yeah. B Tech, if you are interested in B Tech, uh, there are exceptions. You know, exceptions are always there. There may be a branch like B Tech Biotechnology where you don't require maths, but uh, that that branch is not available or may be available at. very few colleges yes for btech you need pcm physics chemistry maths is what you need for pursuing a btech right sir another is uh, uh, does ipu offer mbbs obviously ipu has got very good medical colleges so if you are interested in mbbs then you appear for deet and uh, you can get uh, admission in uh, ipu affiliated colleges for mbbs it also has got uh, ayurved it also ip also has got homeopath so bms bhms mbbs all three are there with ip as i said professional courses almost every course is available sir uh, this question is lot of questions actually i think we can take few questions and then we need to close it because of the paucity of time uh, is it offering fashion designing ip university yes it is offering fashion designing uh, <clears throat> is a course offered by ipu uh, i believe uh, two three colleges among the 100 odd affiliated colleges two three colleges are offering fashion designing yes right uh, which one is better bba or bcom i am confused <laughs> this is what it's written obviously about. bba is better because bcom is an academic course and bba is a professional course so as i said uh, with globalization privatization and liberalization the structure of jobs is changing the government jobs are shrinking the private jobs are expanding and for getting a good private job you need to go for a professional course rather than an academic course so therefore in my opinion bba is superior to bcom being a professional course sir another choice uh, the student is asking uh, bsc cs or btech cs obviously btech cs because btech is a four year course it makes you an engineer so uh, bsc is a three year course and as far as job opportunities are concerned btech cs are in great demand in the post covid era they are going to remain so as i said for three to four decades uh, sir uh, another uh, student is asking about the uh, date for uh, ipu uh, cet exam uh, when is it going to happen and how should we prepare for it so as far as the dates are concerned uh, the forms generally uh, they, they open up around april and uh, the best thing is that you keep in touch with some ipu college and the ipu website where you get all the information so uh, the forms will open around april the test will be conducted say in may the results will be there and the counseling will start in june july and by august first week the classes start right uh, what was the second part uh, how to prepare for it yeah so as far as preparation is concerned uh, students you know that uh, uh, generally every competitive exam has got uh, typical sections so uh, clat has got five sections then uh, say bba entrance it has got three four sections like Uh, general knowledge obviously is one section of each competitive exam then english comprehension is a compulsory section then mental ability or mathematics is again a section and uh, as far as the uh, details are concerned uh, i can request dr shalini to hold a separate session wherein the details of the questions the sample questions everything can be discussed in little detail yes definitely we can do that probably i'll talk to the teacher concerned sir last question we can take uh, one should opt for ba llb or bba llb what is the difference between the two okay so uh, can i say that the difference between ba llb and bba llb is 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 the difference uh, is the same as the difference between uh, coke and thumbs up 
<laughs> well, I, I try to elaborate my point. Uh, you may disagree, but I'll elaborate my point. So in a typical law five-year course, there are 10 semesters. The 10th semester is on the job. So nine semesters, you come to the college, right? Now in nine semesters, every semester you have five subjects. So in all in nine semesters, you study 45 subjects. In BLLV and BCom LLB, out of 45, 38 subjects are same. So is it the same as difference between Coke and thumbs up? Well, uh, when you will do, I'll, I'll elaborate a little more. If you will go for BLLB, and, and this difference is only there in first year and second year. Third year, fourth year, fifth year are identical, right? And even in first year and second year, the difference is to the tune of 40% only. So out of five subjects, only two subjects are different. Three are same. Say for example, in, uh, in uh, BLLB or BBLLB first year, your legal English is same, legal methods is there, law of contracts is there. The two different subjects will be, if you'll go for BBLLB, it will be something like principles of management and OB. If you'll go for BLLB, it will be economics and sociology. So that way, uh, to summarize the point, out of 45 subjects, 38 are identical, they are same. So that way, the difference is only of packaging. Uh, but still, I need to answer that question. Huh? I can't skip the question by uh, saying that both are same. Uh, I don't know students believe that if you are preparing for judiciary, BLLB is better because for judiciary, the questions are there from economics, sociology, and political science. Or if you are preparing for government exams, BLLB is better. If you want to join a law firm, BBLLB is better. Another point here is, uh, these days the nature of cases is changing. The nature of litigation is changing. And we find that uh, the traditional cases are not there. Traditionally, law means what? It means criminal cases, getting a bail, <coughs> getting a person out of jail. Law is no more like that. Law is about patents, about IPRs. These, these new areas are coming up. Law is about GST. So if you are interested in these new and upcoming areas, probably BBLLB is the course which will suit you better. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think uh, we need to stop here. There are a lot many questions. Students, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going, uh, I've just put in my number in the chat box, 8920981152. It is the official number of the IP University. So you can contact on this number if you have any further queries, right? Uh, and I would, I would request um, Amrita ma'am also, if students want to have separate sessions for how to prepare for CET, uh, what are the various uh, kinds of questions, what are the various topics that are going to be there, we can conduct separate uh, uh, sessions for uh, preparation of CLAT, for preparation of CET, because uh, that's what our forte is. So we can do all that, right? So I think uh, today's session agenda was to give you the information, general information about the IP University. And I think that has been fulfilled. So uh, with this, we come to the end of the session. Um, I would like to thank you. Uh, thank you, Amrita ma'am. Thank you, Presentation School, all the faculties who are sitting here, principal ma'am, who has given the permission to conduct this webinar, all the students, you were all the wonderful audience sitting here after your classes and we have got such a good number of students who are attending the session. So thank you so much. I would also like to thank uh, uh, our, our uh, student Dipali who is sitting here and talking to her juniors. So that's, that's wonderful. And last but not the least, uh, Swami sir, it was indeed a pleasure to hear your presentation and your, uh, you know, to the point answers and uh, lucid answers to the students. I hope that many of their queries uh, have been resolved. So, so thank you. Thank you all, all of you. Ma I just thank you so much. To, uh, I just want to mention one thing. Uh, Ma'am, I've dropped my number in the chat box. So if you want to. Yes, yes, you, yes. I have seen know. that. Bita. I have seen that. So all the students who wanted to note down the numbers. Uh, last number is, is of myself, IP University. Uh, Dipali has also put in her number. So in case you want to get in touch with any one of us, you are, you are most welcome to do that. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Dipali. Uh, I don't remember seeing Dipali in the, I don't remember the face though, but I think we must have been in touch because I'm also an alumni of Presentation Convent and I've also studied here for 13 years. 
so uh, i on behalf of all the teachers ma'am and all on the behalf of all the students would like to thank you this indeed was very informative and uh, the kind of questions that students were putting in and sir was answering them was really helpful and i believe the students and the teachers will agree that we will look forward to have more sessions with you all right sure, and sure. Uh, before uh, before we wind up the session i will uh, request avril and parneet to please come up with the vote of thanks i quote gratitude makes sense of our past bring peace for today and creates a vision for tomorrow unquote a very good afternoon to all on behalf of the students of class 11th and 12th i would like to extend a heartfelt gratitude to dr ravi kant swami and dr shalini gupta for enlightening us with their expertise and insights we are highly obliged to have you today sir and ma'am we are also grateful to our school management for organizing a session full of knowledge expertise which we'll cherish forever i on behalf of all students would like to thank you for presenting such a fruitful session today thank you thank you thank you all thank you so much thank you so much ma'am thank, thank you students thank you teachers thank you sir